Ian, with automation comes flexibility. Uh, we move on to our third piece now, which we're going to look in detail at this Mazak HQR 200 MSY. Yes. And some of those areas that flexibility really comes into play. Now, could you maybe just explain to start with what this machine is in terms of turrets and spindles and so forth? Yeah. Uh, basically, this machine is a turning centre, so it's not just a standard lathe, it has the ability to mill. This machine has two turrets, top and bottom turrets, both with full Y-axis, C-axis on the spindles, and all both turrets have the ability to have 16 station live tooling. So the flexibility for this machine compared to some of our other lathes is, is phenomenal really what it can do. So it's an automation cell in itself, it's fed by a, a hydrofeed bar feed is, unit yes. that we have here. You've got two parts in your hand yes. and we're going to pick on this part on your in your left hand to start with because yep. this is a component, um, you couldn't do this in the same way on your other machines as you can on this. This machine has got the flexibility and the tool capacity to do this hasn't it? Can oh, you explain? Oh, definitely yes. So this, is, this is a medical company came to us um, with a particular problem um, basically with what's going on at the moment in that they needed to increase the capacity within the wards so they redesigned a component uh, which basically went from one oxygen branch to two so they came to us to see obviously if we could help in the manufacture of the components um, with a typical part like this if you look at the ports that's on there there's three different ports around it as well as you've got engraving on the end there obviously the ability of this machine with having the amount of live tooling and the twin turrets gave us the option to actually load up the machine to be able to machine something like this in around about 10 minutes because of the capabilities of the machine. Okay, now whereas on your other machines you may not have had enough tools, I think you said you needed 14 tools yeah. on I'd, one. It, I'd say with roughly about 14 tools, possibly 15, to actually machine this component, where our other machines, the maximum we have is 12 station turrets. Not only that as well, the only other machine we have with a twin spindle has only a very small indexer so in other words when you try to machine the second side of the component it can only pulse round where this machine because it's a full c-axis gives you the ability to actually machine in a continuous movement which is what we needed for this type of component so the hqr then as a machine this is almost like two machines isn't it in one where oh definitely identical on both sides that 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 bigger carousel on the turret or that bigger tool capacity the y-axis and the C-axis on the spindle, it two is. machines in one. Oh, the, the other benefit from this machine compared to other twin spindle machines we've got, with the twin turret, it runs fully independent. So it's like two machines in one where you can run both spindles at exactly the same time doing completely different processes with milling, which you, we can't do on any other machine. Okay, now I'm going to take that one off you. Yep. Uh, if you can then look, let's show us this other part, because this is really fascinating here. We're looking at this, and I looked at this, and I thought to myself, why wouldn't you make this out of out of tube? But there's, there's a good reason not, isn't there? And yeah. it's made out of bar, basically. It, it's made out of solid bar. The reason why we haven't made it out of tube, we tried tube, but the problem is getting tubes in the right sizes, the properties of tubes as well, machine completely different to solid. And actually, for to stick a U-drill and to machine this out of solid doesn't take very long at all in comparison to the cost of the tube. And actually, we were able to get a better finish making this out of a solid than we would do out of a tube. Okay, now I don't want to get away from the fact that we're talking about automation here because it's really what this show is about this week. This machine enabled you to run um, these in quantities in an automated fashion, oh, didn't it? definitely. It, even with the work holding that you use, because I'm thinking how do you grip something like that once you've done the U-drilling operation? Maybe explain how all that yeah, works. Yeah, I mean, obviously with a part like this, this is all to do with aesthetics. So it's all about what the part looks like, as opposed to, so long as it's within a drawer and spec, everything's good. So with something like this, correct its own issues. So to manufacture something like this and still maintain the surface finish on the outside, we actually got a long series set of jaws to hold internally. So we feed the part in on a bar, through the bar feeder, machined, drilled a hole in that machined, obviously the ports around the outside, and then actually fed it through to another set of jaws on the second spindle to be able to hold it internally so we didn't damage any of the outsides. We can then machine, as you can see, the drilled and tapped hole in the other side. And then when it's finished, we have an unloading arm now which comes down, we'll grab the part, slide it out of the jaws, will come up and then it'll drop it on a conveyor and it'll roll down the end of the machine. And, and what about the damaging of it when it's coming out on the conveyor? How do you protect against that as well? Uh, well obviously what you have to do is try and look at the best methods to try and minimise any kind of damage. Obviously we filled up the unloading hopper at the end with a lot of bubble wrap to make it nice and soft. 
Obviously, we minimise the amount of parts that obviously get unloaded at one time. Obviously, we'll have one of the loaders come up. They'll periodically take the parts out so there isn't a big amount of parts and they're banging against each other. And when you run a job like this, it's about just keeping on top of it. The machine runs, but you just keep on and unload it and make sure that everything aesthetically and obviously dimensionally is correct. And once again, you, 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 it's not cost effective to run this job without automation, is it? It just wouldn't work. It, it, it isn't, no. When you're talking about making these in batches of a thousand, if you have to keep going up to the machine, open the door, unload the part, you lose time, somebody could be busy doing something else. It's all time wasted in the machine sitting there doing nothing. So automation is the key. Um, Michael mentioned to me, and this is where we're going to close this one off, about this being like a vending machine as well, like the other two solutions that we've looked at. The amount of tools you can have, you've got a preset amount of, uh, of tools on there, haven't yes. you? Which basically allows you to go from job to job pretty quickly. Is that is that the advantage of this technology oh, too? Absolutely. I mean, we talked about automation on this particular, what we've got running on this machine at the moment, we're only using one spindle. But because we use, we're doing a variety of jobs at the same time, we have the ability to load both the turrets up with more tools than we would do on any other machine. So we've probably got about 20 tools set in this machine. And that gives us the ability to be able to just load a program, hit the button, run apart, load another program, because all the tools have been set for all the jobs simultaneously. So we could probably run 10, 15 jobs that use the same tooling, but only because this, tool, this machine has the capabilities of doing that. We couldn't do it on any other machine. That's why we've not used the twin spindles, we've used one spindle, but we've used the two turrets to get that extra productivity out of the machine.